Okay, fine. Tonight, I said we are going to work on the payroll system. And it's very simple, so it won't take us more than 30 minutes or 40 minutes for us to really have the training. So it's a simple, it's a simple thing, but yet difficult for some people if you don't get how to actually calculate it. So this payroll we want to do tonight is based on changes in Finance Act 2021. So if you have been preparing your payroll based on Finance Act 2022, so you should know that there's little change, or let's say change is there, that you have to take cognizance, uh, cognizance of it. So you have to take note of it. So without wasting our time, I will start by, I will start by tapping the company name. So we assume the company name is um, House of Accountants. So House of Accountants. There's no need for me to start divine, uh, explaining the meaning of payroll or telling us about the theory aspect. It's something I know we are very familiar of, or familiar with, and it's something you can just Google about and check the meaning. But payroll is actually for, is, is, is always prepared by an accountant, whereby it's going to give us the gross salary of an employee, I mean, of the, the employees, the staff, the amount is supposed to collect maybe monthly, then what are the deductions you are going to deduct? Maybe pension, it's going to have payee. And if there's any loan, staff loan, you deduct, then you get the net pay. So it's the net pay you are going to get. That is what you are going to send to bank to pay the particular staff. So let's see how we are going to calculate it. If time permits, you can see how we can pass the journal as well, if the time permits us. So I'm going to just take two names of staff for us to be very fast about it. So, so these are the headings we need to have. So we are calling this one. So let's take note of the headings we have. We have task exemption, which is not really, this one is not there. So we're having 8%, we're having a consolidated relief, and we are also having gross salary. So let's remove this. So I'm going to take two names very quickly. Two names, just for our for the example. Okay, so. Let me take number one. Name. Let's use um, John. John. Um, James. That's number one. And let's take another person, let's say Moses, Moses Joy. So these are the two people who want to, who want to compute their salary for. So let's assume that the salary of these people, the first person, let's assume that the gross salary, or let's say basic salary, is um, 50,000. Let's say 50,000. Let's say this one is um, 60,000. And let's say this housing is um, 45. Thousand. OK, 
Okay. So let's assume this is the salary. And let's say this one is monthly. So we are going to do the one of monthly. Or let me do it in a year for, for us to have better understanding of what we're saying. Let's say this one is 500,000. Let's say this one is 600,000. And let's say this one is um, this. So in a year, what will the first thing be collecting? Let's say this plus this and plus this. So the person is collecting 1.5 million era in a year. So let's say annual, annual gross. So this is the breakdown, basic, transport, housing, and the total will give us gross. So if you want to get what the person is collecting in a month, you can actually divide this by 12. If we actually work for 12 years, I mean for 12 months, so we can actually have this as, um, as monthly pay. You can call this one monthly pay or monthly gross. Okay, fine. Now, based on new finance art, assuming we are working on finance art 2020, what we have done is that what we have done is that we will apply all the relief on it straight like that. But now that Finance Act 2021 said, we should deduct pension first from the gross salary. That's what he's saying that pension should be deducted from the gross salary. So what is the pension? Pension is 8%. 8% So pension is at 8% of gross salary. So what do we do? We say this times 8%. So pension for a year will be supposed to be on F, not on G. So pension in a year on gross salary. So pension in a year would be what? Would be 124,000. Now, since we have gotten our pension now, whatever that is left, we are going to get that. So after you have deducted your pension from the gross salary in a, in a year, this minus this so this is now the new gross that you are going to compute all the relief and after that you'll be able to calculate your payee on that so very quickly i'm going to do that i'm going to do that now so what is the next step to do since we have gotten new balance now we are going to compute our relief. The first relief says, what the first relief is saying is this, 200,000 or 1% on the gross income. That is this new gross you have now. 1%, I mean, on this new, on this original gross, which is 1.555. So 1% 1 on this or 200,000 Naira. So higher of the two, that's what you're going to pick. 
So what are we going to do? Let's test the one that is higher, 1% of this, times this amount, that's 15,000. So 15,000 is not as high as 200,000. So what are we going to pick? It means we are going to use 200,000 as our relief here, because the law says we should pick higher of the two. So we pick 200,000. The second consolidated relief says that 20% on gross income. You pick another 20% on gross income. What is the gross income? The gross income is this times 20%. And what do we get? We have 3,110, that's 310,000. That's 20% on gross income. So whatever we have left now is what, we're, is what we are going to call taxable income. That's where we are going to compute our tax, our payee on. So let's get what we have left if you remove all this now. So the main gross that remain is this, after deducting our pension, then minus this, minus this. So what is left for us to calculate payee on is this figure. So this is the figure we are going to calculate our payee on now. So how do we calculate the payee? I'm going to show you the simple way. So this is the money we want to look at. We want to calculate payee on. So let's come to this place. Let me introduce the formula to you first. This is the formula we use for payee. Okay, this is the formula we use for payee. Computation, or let's say payee. So payee competition. Okay, so the four three hundred, it will be based. It will be based on what? It will be based on seven percent. The second three hundred will be based on eleven percent. The next five hundred will be based on fifteen percent. The next fifteen, I mean five hundred thousand will be based on nineteen percent. The next one thousand six hundred, I mean one point six will be based on 21%. Then anything above this 1.6 will be based on 24%. So looking at this figure now, what are we going to do? It's simple. So we said this times 300, then multiply by seven. We are having 21,000. Then the same thing, the same formula for this, we we'll multiply to the two together. So let's, then the same thing to the next one, we we'll multiply it together. And what do we get? We get this figure. Now let's add this figure together. If it's not more than nine point, I mean, 916. Looking at this three figure, If you add it together, you will see that we are having 1.1. So it's higher than this figure. So it means we will not take this. We will not take this. So looking at this two, we give us 600,000. So we are removing this now. It's giving us 600,000. So 600,000 minus this particular figure we want to, the, the real, taxable income. So let's take it away. What do we get? We have this figure minus this figure. And we are having three 
one six. So instead of using this five hundred now, let me copy this one somewhere because we are still going to need it somewhere. So let me pick it somewhere here. Okay, fine. So instead of using this 500, we don't need this one because the remaining salary, the remaining balance is not up to that figure. So what is remaining is 301. That's what we are going to put in the next percentage. And then we check the normal competition on it. So looking at this three now, this is the total payee this particular person will pay. And that is what? That is 101. So this is what we are going to bring back to the workings here as our taxable, as our uh, tax payable. We bring it here and then paste special. So, looking at this, so this is, this is what we are going to have at our, as our tax payable for the year. Now, not only that, the law says that even if you compute this tax payable, you must also compute minimum tax. You must also compute minimum tax on every pay you don't. So minimum tax is at is at what? At one percent. Is at what? One percent. Is at one percent. So what are we going to do? We say. 1% on gross income. What is our gross income? The gross income is this. So multiply by 1%. What do we get? This one is giving us 15,000, which we have done before here. And this one is giving us 101. Please don't be confused. This minimum tax we just compute based on 1%. And 1% on gross, they are, not, they, are, they are not the same thing. This 1% on gross is talking about consolidated relief. And this one is talking about minimum tax. Those that is both are 1%, 1%. So now we are looking at 15,000 and 101. The law says that you should pick the higher of the two. So instead of picking 15,000, you are going to pay 101,400 as your payee. So what will now be the net pay for that particular stamp at the end of the month? So we are going to have, this is the taxable income. This is the remaining taxable income minus this 101 because it's the higher of the two. So by the time you want to pay the person, this is what we are going to pay him at the end of that for the annual. This is annual. This is annual because we have been doing it based on 12 months. So this is annual. So if you want to see what you are going to pay the person monthly net now, it's going to be this figure. If the person have worked for 12 months, so it means we'll be having the person will be collecting this figure as a monthly salary, net pay of salary. And if you want to know what the gross is actually is, so this gross divided by 12, so this divided by 12, so it means someone that is collecting 126, I mean, 129,000 is actually having 67 as 
net pay is us is actually having 67 as net pay. But let's look at the next example for better clarity. So let's assume that this person, the total salary, the total salary here is, um, let's say, let's say um, this figure, Okay, let's assume this is one, 2.0. So let's assume this one is 100, or let's say 800. Let's assume this is um, 500. And let's look at the balance to be basic. So let's say this minus this minus this. So it's giving us this. So let's assume that the addition of these three is what we have gotten here. Okay, so this is the addition of the two. I'm trying to copy and paste here so that we have a good example. Okay. So, fine. So we're having this figure. So what do we need to do for monthly gross? If you want to know what the person is collecting monthly, you can actually divide it by 12 as well. So it means the person is collecting 170 every month. So what we need to do, the pension as usual is 8%. So this gross times 8%, what do we get? Okay. So this is 8%, which is pension. So what would be the new gross now? The new gross will now be this figure minus pension. So we're having 1.8. Now on this 1.8, that's where we are going to calculate our consolidated relief loss. So let's check if 1% of this, 1% of gross, One percent is twenty thousand, so it's not up to two hundred. So we are still going to apply the two hundred because the law says we should take higher of the two. Now, for the consolidated relief loss, what are we going to do? We are going to find twenty percent on gross. What is twenty percent of gross? So multiply by twenty percent. What do we get? That's 409. Fine. What the loss is saying, why do we have this relief? These two, this one and this one, they are both relief. They are trying to remove it from your from your pension, I mean from your gross salary, so that tax you are going to pay, it won't be that high. So that's why we are having it here. Taxable income now. Instead of you paying, let's let's check this now. Instead of you paying tax on this figure, on this 1.8, after deducting your pension, you will be paying tax on lesser amount. That is this amount minus this 200,000 and minus this 408. So you'll be paying tax on 1.2 instead of paying tax on 1.8. And you know that the higher the income, the IRD tax. Okay, so fine. Now let's go back to our 
PE computation now. Let's find out what should be our tax, our PE for the whole year. So let's pick this figure and come back to where we have our PE. So I will put it here. I will put it here and paste special. Okay, fine. So I'm going to deduct, I'm going to remove this because I don't, I'm done with it already. So instead of cleaning this one, I won't, I won't rub it. I will just, I will just pick this because it's still going to be the same formula we are using all through. So I need this. So is the normal thing supposed to be there is 500, is 500 based on the normal formula. The second one is also 500, but the percentage supposed to be what? Supposed to be 19%, supposed to be 19%. Okay, so we are, we are still going to calculate our normal thing. So this times, this, what do we have? We have 21. So if I drag it down to this point, we are going to have up to this point. Now let me add it together and let's see what you have. I'm having the addition of this three now will be giving me what? So addition of this three, We will give me 1.1. Meanwhile, I'm looking for what? 1.2. I have 1.2 to calculate on. So if I write, if I use the next one now, if I pick the next one with it, it's going to be more than that particular figure. You can see that we are having 1.6 now and we have 1.2. So I'm going to remove the, the last 500 because the, uh, Taxable income is not up to that figure. So I'm not going to deduct, I'm going to get the difference between what I really want to and the available what I can use. So I have 168 left. So I'm going to put it here on the next 500 and then apply that formula on it. So by the time I apply the formula on it, it's going to give me, it's going to give me 32. So let's add these three together. This is what we need to pick now as our what? As our tax table. I mean, as our tax, which is our payee. So I will just come here and paste it here. So the tax is this for the whole year. One, Six, one. So what are we going to do? If we check 1% of this on the gross times 1%, it's going to give me this. So I'm going to pick the higher of the two. So what are we going to do now? I want to get my net uh, pay. My net pay will now be the gross, which is this figure minus my what? Minus my tax. So I'm having one point, one point. Uh, I think there's a mistake. Okay, there's no mistake here. Oh, it's supposed to be on this figure. So it's going to be on the taxable income minus tax. So what I have left now is one. One six. So if I divide this figure by 12, divide it by 12, what am I going to have? I'm having 92,000. So I'm having 92,000. Is there anything? Let's see. Okay, so I'm having 92,000 as net pay out of this. Let me see the payee.
how much is the person paying? Let's see the total deduction in a month now. So let's say this figure as pension. Let's say I'm paying for the year. So let's divide this two by 12. What do we get? This divided by 12. And then this divided by 12. So this is the figure divided by 12. So let's add, let's as we said the person is collecting 170,000, 170,000. So let's minus this, this minus this figure minus this figure. We're having 142. So we're having 142. Okay, so there's a mistake here, sorry. So what you're supposed to have here is this figure. So this figure, which is the gross income here, minus, what do we have here? Minus pension and minus payee, what is our payee? This is our payee here. So that's what we are going to get. The same thing to this place. So the person that is collecting, the person that is collecting a 129,000 in a month, we have a net pay of 110. Then the person that is collecting 170 in a month, we have a net pay of 142. So let's take the last one. I think we still have, we have not taken that much. Okay, let's take just one more for better understanding. So after this one, I can take any other question. So let's take the next one is this. Um, let's say um, um, Rose, Rose John or Rose uh, Paul, okay. Rose Paul is collecting, let's say 600,000 here. Let's say 600,000 here. Or let's say, okay, 600,000 here. This will, this will be the last example. So in case if you have not gotten it, and let's assume this person is also for transport is, is uh, being separated into this. Then for other, which is an uh, housing, let's say the housing is higher, which is uh, 900,000. So like we have done, we are going to add the whole three together. I'm taking it slowly now so that to be clear. I'm adding the three together plus this and plus this. That is 2.2. If it is 2.2, what would be the amount for, for monthly? It would be this amount in a month. So it means the person is collecting 183,000 every month. So what is 8% on this particular gross? 8% on this particular gross? is this, so this is the pension for the whole year. Then the new gross, what would be our new gross now? New gross will now be this annual gross minus the pension. This is new gross. So we are going to take our relief on it now, higher of the two, by the time you check the higher of the two, so definitely it's going to be this. 200 is going to be higher. Then by the time you calculate 20% on it, it's going to give us this, 20% on this particular figure. That's this figure. Then what would be the taxable income? So the taxable income would be, you minus everything from there. So by the time I copy it and then paste it here. So what you are trying to say is, so what you are going to say is, the new gross we have minus 
both allowances you have or both reliefs you have. So it's going to get new taxable income. This is what we are going to calculate our payee on now. So you come to your payee sheet and then paste it. Okay. So please let's continue now. So we are here. We have gotten our taxable income, which is 1.3. So please, you bring this 1.3 to where you can calculate your payee. So this is the figure I want to calculate for, which is my payee. Okay. So the law, the, the normal computation is this. This one still uh, valid. He said the first 300 of my salary should be based on 7%. The second 300 of my salary should be based on 11%. The next 500 in my salary should be based on 15%. So if I check it now, this figure times this 7%. I have this figure. So if I drag it down to this place, so let's calculate if this figure is up to 1.3 or is lesser than 1.3. So let's pick it somewhere here to cross to test check. So we're having 1.1. So if we pick another 500, are we still going to have less than that figure? Let's see. Oh, it's higher than this. So we can't use the old 500. So we have to bring the balance. What will be the balance? It will be this figure minus total we have here. So it's going to be total we have here. So what are we going to do? I'm going to copy this one and paste special. Okay. So this now will now be this minus this. I'm having this figure. So this is the next, after I have taken the first 500. So on this now, that's where I'm going to charge my 19% that is remaining. So I put it here and then apply the same formula to this. So which is 53, 53, nine, oh, sorry. I have to paste this one special so that it will not be affected. So, okay. So what would be my figure here now as my payee for the month, for the whole year, would be this figure for the third person. So I'm going to pick this figure now and bring it to my payroll calculation. This is what will be for the year as payee tax for the for the for the staff. So let's look at this now. So the law says we should calculate one percent on this. So we calculate the one percent on this. It's going to give us this particular uh, particular figure. So if you multiply it, 1% on the gross is giving us 22,000. So we are going to pick the higher of the two. So we are picking 182. 182 now, what does the formula say? Is that we should pick the gross, take away the pension. So let's take it slowly. The old, pen, the old, the old gross is 2.2 minus, what is our pension? Our pension is this figure. And what is our tax? Our tax is what? It's 182. It's giving us this figure. So what will the person collecting this figure, 183 be collecting monthly after deduction and every other necessary thing? So what do we do? We say this amount divided by two, by 12. If the person has worked for 12 months, if the person worked for 11 months, but this one will be based on 12 months. This is what they'll be collecting every month. 
So what do we have? So it means the person that you put in it uh, is or a uh, appointment letter that will be collecting 183,000 will be actually go or will be going on with a 153,000 after reduction. So this is the net pay. And this is what we are going to send to the bank to pay each staff every month. So now let's see how we are going to treat it. So if you want to treat it, the first thing to do here is, let's come to the treatment here, or let's call it a journal entry or posting entry. So I call this one journal entry. Journal entry for it. So what is it going to be? The first thing you have to do is to debit, the salary, or let's say gross salary, a bit gross salary, okay? Debit the gross salary, and then credit salary paid. Debit the salary paid. I mean, credit the salary paid. This is the first posting you have to do. This is posting one. So after posting this now, what do we need to do next? You go to the next one. Now that you want to pay the, you want to pay this particular salary. What do we do? We now say. Debit salary paid. Then you are not going to credit bank. Credit what? The bank you want to pay it. The bank is paying because the money is coming out of the bank. You debit, you credit the bank. So by time you, so we are going to take an example of this now. Let's see how it's going to be. It's going to be like. So I'm going to put the bank under because not only bank we are going to credit. So we are going to also credit pay, and we also credit pension paid. So I will also put it from the e -pay. So you credit this one as well. So let's remove this. I will only post one now. I will post one of our staff. So let me post, let me post the one of, um, of the second person. So we said the person is collecting 204 as a gross salary in a month. If you want to do it monthly, we we'll do the one of monthly as well, if we can have enough time to do that. So the gross salary of this person in a year for annual is this figure. So they say we should debit the gross. Then the same figure will go to salary payable. The same figure. This is what is coming here. Okay. Now we want to. We want to. This is a provision. The first one here is provision. Now we want to make the payment now. What? How much is the pension? The pension for that particular person in a year. I mean, paying for the for that particular person in a in a year is this figure. This is paying for him, and this is um pension for the person, the pension in that particular year is this figure, right? So it's supposed to be in credit, fine. So how much is the net pay? 
the net pay is how much? The net pay is this one seven. I'll bring it to you. By the time you have these three together, it will be giving us that same figure. But let's see this plus this plus this plus this. So you can see that this figure is the same thing we have here because this is the breakdown of what we have done here. So if this one is done, I mean, if this one is for credit in the first place, and now it's credit. I mean, it was credit in the first place, and now it's now debited now. So the two we need of. So we are be, we'll be having zero balance in there. So this is now what we're going to pay. So you debit the bank and then pay this one to the particular. So this is what the person will collect as his own salary. And then the company will be having this one as payable in their own account. So that is just the journal entry. Um, let me take the one of um, monthly now. This is for, for a whole year. So let's take the one of monthly. So it's still going to be the same way. There's no difference. So let's say this one is monthly. So what do we do? The gross salary for that particular person in a month. So let's come here. The gross salary in a month for him is 170. We debit it. Then we credit the same thing. That is the first entry. The second entry is how much is the pension? How much is the payee for the month, in a month? You know, this payee we are having here is for the 12th month, right? So we are going to divide it by 12. How much do we have? We have 13,000. So let's take the one of pension. Pension also would be this particular figure, but divided by what? divided by 12 as well. What do we have? We have 13,000. So by the time, let's pick the gross salary. I mean, the net pay for, for that particular month. So what is the net pay? The net pay of that person is 142. So I bring it here. By the time we have the three together, this figure plus this figure plus this figure. What do we have? We have 170,000 of, a salary of the gross salary which is supposed to collect. So that is just the simple way of calculating payroll. It's not that difficult. It's not that difficult so using a zero to calculate. So thank you very much. If you have any question, please you can just um, signify. If you have, if there's any question, let us know. Yeah. Yeah, good evening, uh, Olushore. Okay, good evening, sir. Yeah, well done. Thank you so much for this lesson. Really, I have learned a lot from this payroll okay. um, lesson. And I just want to say, may God bless you. Amen. Um, sorry, my question I want to ask, I don't mean we have thousands of staff in a payroll. If I have what? Thousands of staff, hundreds okay. of staff in a payroll. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, okay. And you want to prepare a payroll. Okay. My concern is that on tax payable. Okay. How do we? Is it how we be doing them? The staff one after the other. To, yes. To calculate them. This is how this is how you're supposed to calculate them one after the other. But if I share this, my worksheet with you, mm. there's a part. There's a way I've done it somewhere there. So let me show you. So let's assume that um, we have calculated this. Um, we've calculated this particular figure as income tax. You know, this is where we're supposed to apply our payee formula upon. On. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's come here now. I have a template here you can use. This is taxable okay. income, right? Okay. So yeah. you click on this, we see that there are so many formula on this place. Yes, yes. Now let yes. me pick that figure here now. And let's see, maybe it's going to be the same thing. So this is our taxable income. I pick it from okay. here. And then I come to this taxable income. 
and then paste it special. So can you see what we are having? We are having 161, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's come here. Maybe it's the same figure we have. 161. Perfect. Wow. Okay. So instead of calculating one after the other, you yeah. can actually use this formula, formula. I have generated. So I'm going okay. to share this with you, uh, with uh, those who attended the lecture. All right, sir. So you can just apply the figure on that particular Excel. So it will give you the total number. All right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank okay. you. Yeah. So, is there any other questions that we can call it? A yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Go on, please go on. Good, good evening, sir. And thank you for the. Um, I want to ask that uh, apart from the pension and pay, okay. is there no. I, I know that the. the, the the deductions. I'm going from pension, pension and MPE. Okay, thank you. There are there are other deductions we can have. So let me take that for example now. Okay, so the deduction will now be after you have computed your net pay. Whatever you want to deduct now is going to be after this net pay. So let's assume that. In that particular month, okay. In that particular month, this particular person has a loan payback, and the monthly okay. loan, the monthly loan he pays is like a, let's say like a twenty thousand every month for for repayment of that loan. So, since we have calculated everything, so instead of paying that particular person. 142,000. So what you are going okay. to pay him now is going to be 20,000, which is this figure, this 20,000 minus okay. the net pay. So it's going to be this 142 minus the net pay. So it's going okay. to be 122. That's what we are going to pay into his bank. So you come to this journal now. What you are going to have in this journal for monthly. So instead of having this net pay here, so we create another one. Okay. So this one will now be, you credit this one too. So this one will be loan. How much is the loan? Loan is 20,000. Okay. Loan is 20,000. 20. Then what well, we now pick our net pay from two to two. So which is uh, 120. So if you add it together with this, if you add it together with that um, 20,000, you still got to give her 170. So by the time they want to pay in the salary, this is what this is what this company is going to pay. Why this one will go to appropriate head. Okay. Okay, so about you, what of uh, all this discussion like housing fund, HMO, okay. and the like, okay, will it be on that the people also? Yes. So it depends on if the company have registered for that particular. So we have we have TF. So all those ones, they are just one one percent. They are one one percent okay. on the gross income. So I can just calculate that here. But that one is not always every month. It's just on gross income on annual. Okay. 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 So it's only on. So you can be deducting it every month. So by the time we collect it together, it's going to be. It's going to, so if you want to calculate that term, um, so let's say this is the gross income now. So what is the 1% on this? So it will be 1% on this. 
Okay. Okay. Then one to ten. So it means the person we have uh, twenty two thousand. But this twenty two thousand is for a year. No, this one is the for annual growth. Uh -huh. So it's for a year. Yes, so if the person wants to, you want to be doing it. So since you have gotten it in a year, just divide it by twelve. Okay. Divide it by by twelve. So it means you'll be deducting one one thousand eight hundred. I mean one thousand and one thousand eight hundred in the person's salary monthly in a monthly. So. All right, so thank you very much, sir. So the two are also a uh, statutory deduction if the company has registered for, for that uh, particular insurance and then um, training. So is there another question, please, so that we can? Um, Mr. James, good evening, sir. OK, good evening, ma'am. Thank you so much for this um, great um, training. Okay, I'm so privileged. It will not be received. Um, please, um, on this particular last question, you said um, 1% on gross income, annual gross income. Is it for um, NHS or which one? Which for deduction both. particular? For both. NHS. What are NHS and then uh, the TFS. ITF. I mean, ITF, sorry. Industrial Training Fund. Which one is ITF? Okay, industrial training funds. Exactly. So okay. this one is one. What are them? HMO. The, the HMO. Okay, go the on. The HMO that is not the HMO is in is a Nigerian Social Insurance Trust Fund. HMO is not captured in salary in payroll. It's not captured in payroll. What that are captured in payroll that I know, even the ITF is not captured in the payroll. The, the two basic ones are the national the national housing fund and the national uh, Nigeria insurance trust fund exactly. those are the that's, basic that's one the, you commonly found in Peru uh, so these are the two ITF also can be deducted you can also be remitting it law also says you should remit it one percent on the gross salary. That's if the company has registered you for that particular for the, the, I, the I mean ITF. It's also statutory deduction on Peru. Okay. So all right. but then what please, the um, is so that the, all deductions that can be deducted from one salary for the year or monthly. Yeah, exactly. So that's it. Okay, what of um, I'm convinced of um, the difference between consolidated relief allowance, the okay. one of 200. Okay, 200,000 or 1% gross. Um, consolidated relief allowance. What's the difference? Okay, can you take the question again? It's like network is not stable. Okay, I mean the difference between you no, know, we have to consolidate the relief allowances. Okay, the one for 200, 200,000 or one percent of gross income, okay. or 20 percent of or 20 percent of gross income. What's the difference? Okay, the first, the, this one we have to relieve. So the first one is okay, 200,000 or one percent gross on income. 1% on gross income. You charge that one, higher of the two you pick. But based on what you have done okay. now, 200% is higher than 1% on this gross income. So that's why we are picking 200, 200, 200,000. So okay. the other relief that you are still going to enjoy is another 20% okay. on gross income. So you are going to pick any of this one then you add this one to it as well. Okay, that is that those are types of relief a pay and um, uh, should they enjoy. Well, yes, okay. Exactly. So they have they, they gave two relief for us to have uh, to have uh, to reduce our our taxable income so that you know the higher the income you have, the higher the tax you are going to pay. So they give us this one to relieve, mm -hmm. to, re, to relieve our tax.
taxable income so that the balance will not be too high for tax to charge them. Okay. And this is based on new okay. finance act. So finance act 2021. Okay. Then um sorry, the last question for tonight is um I think I used to hear maximum tax, or there's nothing like maximum tax apart from this minimum tax we are having. <laughs> Yeah, it's only minimum tax you have. It's only minimum uh, tax. No, ma no maximum tax. Uh, no, 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 no. So if the, okay. the, the, yes. So the minimum tax, it means that 1% on the gross salary, and then the, comp the tax authority will not take the lower. They will take the higher of the two. So if you look at the two now, yeah. this is 15, and this is 101. So tax authority will definitely go for the higher one. Okay. Because they have given right. you Thank a lot you, of things. Okay, so is there any other other Thank you. yeah, you're welcome. Is there any other question? Okay, so, so I just want to chip in something here. Okay. Right. On the, 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 the national the national housing fund. Okay. The according to the finance act now is 2.5 percent. Okay, it's two point five it's two point five percent. Yes, it's yeah, it's two point five percent now. Okay, but T and trust fund is still one percent, right? Yes, trust fund is still one percent. But that then one Nigeria should saying... trans uh, Niger... okay, but what you are saying, I hope you are not talking about uh, education tax, right? That's no, 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 it's not education tax. It's not. Okay. It's, okay. it's for housing. Yes, housing. Yeah, it's 2.5. Okay. Thanks. Yes, so it's sir. It's fine. So fine. But the main thing on payroll is just this. Um, it's just two basic, I mean, the things you have done here. So the other deduction is 1%, and you can actually do that when, when you are working on the payroll. But once you can get this, what we have done correctly, so the remaining ones are, are not that big. So um, does it mean HMO is, um, we don't pay for HMO, there's no deduction from our salary, we just say normal benefit of staff to, from the, from the yeah. um, employer. HMO is, is, uh, is not statutory, so it's based on, it's based on the employer. Okay, maybe the person has paid uh, the person has been to hospital and he has been he has he has spent like a ten thousand and the company said okay we are going to pay seven thousand out of your ten thousand so the remaining thousand how do you want to deduct it so it's going to be after next pay that's why you are going to deduct it because it's not statutory it's not mm -hmm. compulsory that you must deduct it so it's going to be part of deduction mm -hmm. or that deduction so let's put it here or that deduction so that amount will be under other deduction. Mm -hmm. So you can add it to this one. And okay, it's not, start, it's not statutory. So it's not, okay. Yes, it's based on the company's policy that this is how they deduct that. Mm -hmm. Then um, our this thing, uh, okay. is it 10% of um, employees' um, pension, employers' pension? Yes. It shouldn't be on the payroll. Yes, it will not be on this payroll you are calculating. Because, because it's not, the, the uh, employee is not the one paying the money. But when you want to post the when you go here, you can add it to this by saying, by separating it. You can say, okay, credit, pension, payable, but you can indicate it. You can say this one, you can indicate it that this one is um, employee. And you can indicate this one too by saying employer. So what will now be the 20 piece, what will be the 10% on that particular gross income? So you can say 10% will be this and this. So it means by the time you have this one together now, the total thing you are going to pay for that particular person is going to be like um, 
30,600 for that particular pay. But if the employee will pay this, then the employer will pay the 17,000. So when you want to post, you post the two into pension payable. Mm -hmm. Why this one go to tax? By the time you add these two together now, it cannot give you this one again because of this 17,000. But is it correct? Since you have already charged employers home along with it. Is it clear? Okay, but the employer should not enter the payroll. No, no, no. Employer will not enter the payroll. If you want to show it on payroll, you can show it separately without having anything to do with your calculation. Oh, right. So it must not affect the net pay or pay of that particular employee. All right, thank you, sir. All right, welcome. Okay. So thank you very much for this. So I'm going to stop sharing now and then make sure I save the video so I can share it with us privately. So thank you and have a, a, a nice night rest. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You are doing well. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. All right. Thank you.